Good morning and welcome to the Decision Point Trading Room. My name is Aaron Swenlin and I am here with my father, Carl Swenlin. We are from decisionpoint.com and we welcome you to go check that website out. I'll show it to you a little bit later, but uh, just want to let you know we are not registered investment advisors, so all trading decisions are your own. Anything you hear in the trading room or read in our blog should not be considered calls to action. The Q&A box is where you're going to put your symbol requests and questions. We love to get those questions. Use that Q&A box for that. The chat box is for you. I do have a moderator, I believe, who's in the, in the house. Um, Fred will be welcoming you into the chat room. Just make sure when you send chat messages that you use the drop-down menu above your comment so that you send it to everyone. Otherwise, it just goes to us and we don't monitor the chat room. That's why we have somebody there to monitor it for us. All right, with not any further ado, I'm gonna pass the uh, reins over to you, Dad. What's going on in the market? What, what's on your mind? Okay, let me share a screen here. We had a question, wanted to know about our analysis of the uh, Silver Cross, Gold Cross Index, and how we use the stocks above their 20, 50, and 200 EMA to uh, assess that. We we carry this on, in our blog under the heading of bias analysis. Basically, it tells us internally what, what bias do we see the market being in? Is it an upward or downward or neutral? Uh, Starting with the Silver Cross Index, you know that's reading of 56 as of Friday. These are end of day readings, and uh, that that means it's the 56 percent of the stocks in the S and P 500 are uh, above have a, a 20 EMA above the 50 EMA, and that's a Silver Cross. So that's 56%. Now we look at, we go to, I used to call these components, but they're not really components, but they are input indicators. Uh, the stocks above their 20 EMA and stocks above their 50 EMA, we get a sense of where the Silver Cross Index may be headed. And we got right here, we'll just go to the first two numbers there, but it's 40, 49% have uh, price above the 20 EMA and 53% uh, with uh, price above the, the 50 EMA. So uh, it needs to be above both of these in order to drive the, or to, to result in silver crosses. If it's above both of them, the, the short EMA will be drugged above the uh, long EMA. So right now we have uh, 49% above the 20. So that means that's the best we can uh, we can accomplish right now. That's lower than 56. The only thing we can take away in a way of uh, positive feelings is both of these uh, indicators are moving higher. So it's possible that this will become uh, more positive, but right now uh, it's likely to be drugged down below the, the uh, silver cross is likely to be drugged down below where it is right now. Same uh, theory on the golden cross, which is uh, at 59%, which means there 59% of the stocks in the S&P 500 have the 50 EMA above the 200 EMA. And, uh, Right now, we have stocks above their 200. EMA is 59% and uh, above the 50 is 53%. So really, uh, again, I note that both the Silver Cross and Golden Crescent are headed downward, and that is because these, uh, these uh, input indicators have uh, uh, are weaker than the the indexes themselves. As you said, when we start to see the improvement in that participation under the surface, that's when we can start looking for the silver cross 
and the golden cross start moving up. It's just until those percentages get higher. I mean, that's that's pretty much the story. So we're watching for those percentages to get higher. And right. And that right now that they're pointing in the way that they could move higher. So let's look at what the market's doing right now. Our candlestick for SPY right now shows three nice updates today included. This is Thursday, the last three days. We haven't updated the total volume. It won't be up till the end of the day, but volume has been uh, nice and strong. Let's look at the new highs and new lows. All right, as of Friday, again, we don't get this update until end of day. Uh, that was expanding. That's a good thing. I don't see any divergences at this point. So that's still, it's uh, giving us a good feedback right now. Okay, here's what I was wanting to get to is this is climax uh, assessment. Uh, on Friday, we had an upside initiation climax and we're getting nice follow through on that today. Um, and we would expect after we might get an update today, but we would expect things to stall for at least a day or two after that. No guarantees, but that's what we look for. And, and it, although it's an initiation climax, uh, climaxes are essentially exhaustion events. So they they uh, indicate a, a, a high and in, internal pressure. Our short-term indicators, again, as of Friday, um, moving higher. We had a, a very oversold readings last week, and uh, then it started reading, uh, moving higher up the scale on both of these. This is a Switzerland trading oscillator for breadth and volume. And uh, getting a nice bounce out of that. These are short term. So th let's take a look at the. Uh... Before you leave the chart. OK, I just wanted to make note that um, it, the STO started rising and rose for two days while the market was moving lower. So they really were on target this week. And I just wanted everybody to know that. Right. And this is this is a typical situation. Uh, we can see that they start moving higher before the lows are hit, or at you know at the lows. So it's um, it's a good indicator. It's got a great name, right? <laughs> okay, here are the intermediate term indicators: um, intermediate term breadth momentum and volume momentum, and uh, they didn't get very oversold. And uh, right now with the market moving higher, uh, it's starting to look very bullish. We had uh, overbought in the normal range and oversold way, way higher than we would uh, expect for bearish uh, outcomes. Let's go ahead and look at the, the dollar. Today, the dollar is down slightly, which should be, Good for gold. We're looking at a rising wedge here, breaking down from that, just as we would expect. Is gold up today because the dollar is down? No. <laughs> <laughs> down slightly. And if you notice our roll to strength indicator, it has been, it got, uh, was doing very well until beginning of February, and then gold started getting weaker relative to the dollar. Um, understand that the dollar, uh, if the, the dollar and the uh, gold are inversely correlated. So, and if everything is equal, a 1% up move in the dollar should mean a 1% down move in, in gold. Uh, of course, it doesn't work like that. And that's why we have the relative strength. So gold got weaker, versus the dollar, and then it started, it's started. it been started getting stronger, although today, not much follow through on that. Um, crude oil, basically in a range here for 
for three, four, almost four months, uh, heading for the top of the range right now. Treasuries, if they're low last week on this support line, and then uh, moving higher. So bonds are getting stronger based on this in the short term, and that means the yields are backing off. Uh, and here's the 10-year yield. Um, actually, it's hit support, and it's actually the top uh, of the bar uh, today. Here's, here's yield. Here's our yield array, I call it. And uh, from the short term to the very long term, and essentially, it's in a rising trend. It's it's been uh, sideways for uh, since uh, November, but it's bottom bottomed out and moving higher. Incidentally, these yields are normal. Let's not put them. I mean, uh, generally speaking, now they are inverted. But I'm saying that these are the kind of yields we should expect on these instruments. And they've been greatly depressed, thank you to the Fed. Uh, the dynamic yield curve, this is not normal. It's inverted and uh, need to uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, it's called the dynamic yield curve because let me just indicate, this is a cool chart that stock charts has, but you, you hit it, um, it's animated, and it starts showing you moving across the, uh, this is about a 20-year, 20 22-year chart, moving across showing you the yield curve at each one of these spots. I'm not going to run it all the way across, but I just, I think that was interesting. Yeah, it does give you a sense of, you know, what happens when it does invert, um, what the markets, gener or what uh, yeah, the yields are doing. You know, when the market bottoms, it's a really a, a kind of a fun chart to mess around with. Um, one thing I picked up last week, I think it was, but uh, off the subject, uh, credit card debt is at an all-time high, which is not good. That's the worst kind of debt. Interesting thing happened getting to <clears throat> the real estate bubble <clears throat> i uh, i watch our home value on the two on redfin and uh, zillow and redfin has always caught, carried us about 15 or 20% lower than zillow you know they're just algorithms and can't take them that seriously but all of a sudden this this last week uh, Redfin tells me my house is worth about 20% more than Zillow is carrying it. And guess what? They're in the mortgage business now. So <laughs> that uh, makes sense. But it's just so people do a mortgage. <laughs> right. <laughs> so watch out there. There's everybody's trying to, to fool you. And I think that'll do it for me. Unless I All right. It. Did we look at Bitcoin? Uh, I know we have some. Oh, I didn't put that up. Let fans me, up there. Let me do Bitcoin. Yeah, that, that was kind of interesting last week. Definitely. There it is. Typical Bitcoin. Right. It's been in a rising wedge and uh, got to the bottom of that wedge. Uh, at the end of February, worked up the, the bottom and finally broke down uh, because there's another uh, exchange, uh, crypto exchange out there that's having some trouble. I don't know uh, what the details are, but <clears throat> uh, let me just look at a longer term chart. <clears throat> this shows you where these support lines, a lot of them are coming from. And uh, uh, this, I think, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think we're going to be challenging these old highs. Just my guess. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, I think that was it. Okay. 
All right, so let me go ahead and take the screen. All right, we're gonna look at the sectors, but before we do, I wanted to take you to our website really quickly and our homepage. So if you are not familiar with our products, we do have two of them, the Decision Point Alert and Decision Point Diamonds. The alert is gonna help you determine the trend and the condition of the market. And the DP Diamonds are stock picks. So we try and find stocks that are gonna ride that tide of trending condition that we're seeing in the overall market. So if you are at all interested, you can certainly sign up for our free newsletter. Um, you're obviously here in the trading room, but if you're not here live, you can register right there. But we publish um, the, the DP Alert Monday through Friday. Um, we cover a topic of interest, um, diamonds, like I said, those are Tuesday through Friday. So you'll get uh, stock picks Tuesday through Thursday. You get a trading room for subscribers only on Fridays, as well as a recap of what the stocks are doing for the past month. All right, so let's get back to it and look at the sectors. All right, so I was watching these on Friday and really I only saw three that looked interesting to me at the time. Energy was one, industrials was another, and the final one was uh, consumer staples. Uh, but now we're starting to see some really interesting movement on PMOs for those more aggressive areas of the market. Some of the things I'm noticing are XLK. We're seeing a PMO turning up on this third day, a very strong rally for that sector. And you can see we're also getting the comm services PMO is turning up now as well. And price has actually popped above that 200 day EMA. So, comm services and technology, two of the mo more aggressive groups, are starting to look healthier right now as we go into this short term bear market rally. Uh, consumer discretionary, the other growth uh, sector, still not quite performing as well as XLC and XLK, but certainly interesting in that that PMO is trying to turn up. I'm also noticing healthcare really starting to make the turn. It's just been really languishing for quite some time all year long. And this has been an area where we found a lot of strength prior with you know, COVID and, and vaccines, et cetera. But now we're starting to see that sector really get depressed. Industrials was really one of the ones that certainly intrigued me as well as materials. Uh, what I like about industrials right now is the breakout that we're seeing. We're not getting huge follow through on that breakout from Friday, but I think ultimately um, this sector looks pretty good. You can see under the surface, we were talking about the silver cross index and the golden cross indexes. Silver cross index turning up on XLI. Golden cross index not looking quite as good here, topping an overbought territory, and it has dropped beneath its signal line. But I think um, the sector is still looking pretty healthy under the surface. But let's take a quick peek here at technology and comm services, which are showing a lot of strength today. You can see that the PMO is turning up here. We had that sell signal that came in at the, about the same time we had the 50 and 200 day EMAs have a positive crossover. So we actually right back here got a long-term trend model or golden cross buy sing signal, but at the same time, the PMO was falling. So we couldn't really put a lot of um, emphasis on that particular crossover, but now we're seeing that bounce off those key moving averages. The participation under the service surface, not quite so healthy in comparison to uh, what we just looked at in industrials and the silver cross is also falling on technology. So it still has a lot of work to do, but as you can see, that relative strength line starting to really move up here. This does seem to be the area of interest. And if we have interest in growth, if we have interest in comm services, that is going to lead, help lead the market higher. These are the guys that usually have the thrust that you need to keep it moving higher. Under the surface, though, comm services, which had really led the market in the beginning of the year, 
Um, finally starting to see a little bit of movement, like I said, to the upside, nice little breakout. Golden and silver cross indexes look a little bit better, but not, not great. And that's just because we need to get some more participation here under the surface with the stocks. But you can see that we're getting a little bit of outperformance here as well on comm services. Now, I talked about healthcare looking interesting, so we have to look at healthcare. You can see that PMO turning back up. And again, like I said, and we saw this acceleration of the downtrend. And now we're starting to get that breakout to the upside, which is excellent to see. But we still need a lot of work. Uh, we need a lot more stocks to start participating in this move, or it's going to probably fizzle. We have only about 40%, 39% actually above their 20-day EMA. And that is still below the percentage on the Silver Cross Index. So while it is turned up, it is vulnerable to be turning right back down because we do have fewer stocks above their 20-day EMAs in comparison. All right. I think I've looked at all the sectors I really wanted to, but I'll throw uh, XLY up there as it is another one of those growth sectors. But as you can see, we're really not getting the kind of action we want out of this sector. PMO is still moving down. And while we have some pretty decent participation under the surface, um, still lower than the Silver Cross Index. So that tells you that this, although it turned up, is very vulnerable to turning right back down. All right, let's take a look at some of the industry groups. And actually, I think I'm gonna look um, a little bit more closely at technology, just because I like the comm services and technology uh, turns today. So I'm in the industry summary. And we're going to go to technology first. Don't want to make you dizzy. Here we go. So I'm just going to click through these industry groups and we're going to take a look at what's happening with the PMO. We're going to obviously be looking at price action and stochastics would be another one. Um, nice breakout here for electronic equipment. It still has quite a bit um, of you know, territory it could cover before it hits strong overhead resistance. So that one's looking pretty good. Look at computer hardware, big gap up. We had a gap prior on Friday that looks like a breakaway gap. This is either a continuation or a runaway gap, meaning we should see some follow through the upside for computer hardware. Notice stochastics moving up nearly vertically. Telecom kind of in a, a, a trading range here. Yes, the PMO has turned up, but it's been so flat. I don't know that I would be interested in the telecom equipment area just yet, needs some work. Computer services, again, a really nice turn, just like the sector is seeing, but it's still kind of early in that move. The PMO is just turning up and stochastics, while they are rising, everything here is still, notice relative strength is still petering out here. So it's not quite ready for, for prime time, as they say. Uh, we've got some pretty nice movement here in electrical components and equipment. Looks like a breakout is on the way. PMO is turned up. Semiconductors, which everybody is mostly interested in, a lot of them. Um, I will look at semiconductors under the surface because we actually do have that available. And it's looking pretty good here. Notice stochastics almost above 80. Software making a nice move here. It looks very similar to what's going on in the S&P with a third rally day. PMO turning up. Stochastics looking pretty good here for software. So two of the really big uh, groups within the technology sector are looking really good, and that could continue to lead this sector upward. Renewable energy also having a really great week last week to finish it and Looks like a little bit of a, a pullback. We are up by almost 1%, but you can see that tail or that wick on the candle right there, the OHLC bar. So we started off with a bang, but it is pulling back a little bit now on renewable energy. I'd be careful with that. That's a huge move to the upside. It just begs to uh, see a pullback. And at that point, then it might be a little more interesting for an entry. All right, I think I've covered enough of the industry groups and sectors. So I think we can um, move along and start looking at some of your symbol requests. And I wanna talk before we do that, 
let's just look at, for example, Tesla. Okay, so what I wanna do is just show you before we really get started in those, the, um, what, we're, what we talk about here on these charts. So I think I have everything on this chart that I could possibly need. I've got the price, I've got my primary indicator that measures momentum. I have the RSI. This actually measures whether price itself is oversold or overbought based on the last two weeks trading range. We have stochastics, which I call my early warning system. They usually turn very quickly and give you uh, notice when things are kind of starting to go bad. You can see where they went under 80 right back here, sort of leading us into the, the idea that we would get some consolidation. And then I like to include relative strength to the group to the SPY, the stock to the SPY, but more importantly, the stock compared to its group. Do we have a leader within the group? And of course, the unbalanced volume, so we get the volume piece. So I'll be talking about that when we go through Tesla. Based on that PMO, we know that things are looking a little bit um, weak. And you can see RSI falling and stochastics with already had given us warning that there might be a problem. A Final thing top. I want to show you. Yes. It's a rounded top. A rounded top. It absolutely is. You could so that's a bad sign, throw. especially with the PMO overbought and uh, on a sell signals. <laughs> yeah, you could make a case for a, a trading range, but you know it's it's looking rounded to me and a, a little dicey. Yeah, I agree. And it stopped at the two hundred day EMA. I mean, it hit that resistance level and immediately turned back down. The other okay. one I'm going to show you is the five minute candlestick chart. This is for our entries and our exits. I'm not gonna show this one for every single stock we look at, but I, I will try and do it for a few. The conservative buy point is a crossover on the five minute PMO combined with a positive RSI. So this isn't really a buy signal. We did get the crossover. You could have made a case to get in there if you were wanting a more aggressive type entry, but the RSI was still negative. And you can see that that signal is really kind of failing right now. PMO is now topped. The sell point is whenever the PMO turns over. It's usually going to get you out at a pretty decent, um, after a move to the upside, typically. It's a, a pretty good sign when you see that five-minute PMO turning over that it's a good time to get out. So the five-minute chart, we only look at it if we're going to enter or exit a stock. We don't use this to see if we want the stock or we wanna get rid of the stock. That's what we do on that daily chart. So this is only for your, um, I'm ready to get in or I'm ready to get out. All right, I'm ready. Let's okay, it. let me take it back just a, a sure. minute. Ah, yes. I have some questions about UNG. Uh, this line down here is where I bought. So I, I was looking good on Friday. Today, it's down like 15, 18%. Yes. Which is nuts. now. Why do you suppose that is? And let me just show you. This is the continuous futures contract. Notice the price. It's around $3, okay? If you move, if it goes three cents in either direction, that's a 1% move. If you go nine cents, it's, <laughs> that's a 3% mm -hmm. move. So this is where that, that's, this is where the, uh, the uh, volatility comes from basically, is that the the uh, futures contracts are so cheap. So And before you get concerned seeing that big move up and why is UNG down, the continuous contracts don't update until after the market close. Correct. Okay. I'll give it back to you. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I know everybody, I, the question was, should we hold it? And, you know, we've talked about UNG a lot and that we like it at this level. One of the things you must remember about UNG, and it's one of the reason I don't buy Boyle, which is the, um, it takes a two times version, I think two or three times UNG, but you have to be prepared for volatility on this. It's just the way UNG tracks. That's why we usually don't um, look at it or get into it until everything really is setting up. 
I do not like stochastics and the way they're acting and dropping below 80. They usually are our early warning system. But at the same time, my primary indicator, the PMO, even with an almost 14% decline, the PMO is still rising. So that tells me there are some issues, but it is volatile and we have to uh, keep that in mind. If this, if you can't, um, you know, if you don't like this volatility, then you definitely should have either a very small position so that it doesn't give you heartburn during the day or just not get involved. Um, I find that with something like this, I start with a very small position so that I don't get that heartburn all day long. And then when things start to look really, really good, I can always add to that position. And it's been tempting to get involved with Boyle, the leveraged ETF on the front side, but it's a two times. So imagine if you will, and I think there are some folks out there probably watching us that are holding Boyle, but you really have to love volatility to get involved in a leverage ETF like this. So um, be very careful. But and I don't want to say, oh, don't worry, it's going to just go up. I, I, you know, I don't have that crystal ball. But the fact that the PMO is still turned up um, tells me that there is that chance that this could be more of a reverse island setup rather than a breakaway gap to the downside. So but I think we much, still. As much as I hate log scale, this is a chart where you really need to do use it or get to a, a much shorter time frame there yeah. we are while well, you're getting a, a yeah yeah so we got the v bottom here and it did do what it's supposed to which is break out above that prior top on the v um, so we did get that and now it is pulling back don't look at this as a support line this is just the average daily volume <laughs> so don't think of that one as support but it is it isn't looking that great um and again, this is Boyle, so it's an extraordinarily uh, difficult one to own. But at this point, I, I do, full disclosure, own it. Obviously, Carl said that he owns it. Um, currently, we're holding, at least I am. Um, I'm not looking to sell it at this point. I feel like this is about the lowest it's really going to go. Maybe I'm going to have to to watch it drop and test this level again. I sure hope not, because I, I'm not... Uh, super happy with what it's doing now. If we get another gap down, we do need to be concerned because at that point, it's prob this probably is a breakaway to the downside. But right now I'm counting on it to be a reverse island. Yeah, in my opinion, it's going higher in the long term, but it's just, it's too nutty to try to uh, use close in technical analysis. To, yeah. It's just, you know, it's just too crazy. Yeah, um, I had a question here. Uh, mm -hmm. if you're done. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, is there a way to change the x-axis scale of dynamic yield curve uh, scale from 22 years to say two years to check small changes? Uh, no, there isn't. As far as I know, you'd have to uh, use something like my yield of rate chart, or just you know, uh, use a single. A single chart with all of the ones you're interested in, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's it for now. All right. I see that the top one is Lululemon. All right. Okay. Big time trading range stock. Um, not really offering much in the way of upside potential because it is range bound here. PMO has been flat the entire way. Yes, we do have a new PMO buy signal. Um, but we'll probably get a sell signal right away. We're just going to see this continue likely to braid at least as long as we stay in this trading range. Stochastics are leading, but notice that uh, relative strength is starting to, to tick downward. Um, I mean, it's only one day of trading, but still. I don't like RSI. It is negative. I mean, if I owned this, I certainly could see holding it through, uh, you know, waiting for a stop level right around there, which would be, what would that be? Yeah, it's about a 4% stop level. So if you're okay with um, a possible 4% loss, um, that's where I would probably set my stop. I wouldn't get involved in this one. It just doesn't have a lot of upside potential. Okay, ASX. 
Okay, semiconductors. Oh, I did promise I would look very quickly at the semiconductor one. I'm going to do that because I did say I would. So we actually have um, golden and silver cross now for semiconductors. So we can actually look under the surface on the semiconductor ETF. And so we have the percent above 20, 50, 200, silver cross, golden cross. So silver cross is at a giant 92% here and it is falling because we have fewer stocks above their 20 and 50 day EMAs. But look at the improvement, really nice, including stocks getting above their 200 day EMA. And right now the golden cross index is reading 76% but you can see that the stocks above their 50 and 200 is higher than that percentage, meaning that the Golden Cross could start to see some movement to the upside. So semiconductor is certainly looking interesting, but I have to say that Silver Cross Index topping an overbought territory does make me nervous. So if we do start to see a failure in this group, it probably will be uh, you want to get out pretty quick. But right now it's it's looking pretty good. So back to ASX. Yeah, the sectors and industry groups, uh, they don't have as many stocks in them as say the S&P 500 or the S&P 100. So it, uh, it, they can move a little more radically without it being too uh, serious. Uh, you know, if you get three stocks, dropping in a 20 stock group it's more it has more impact than if it's a 500 stock group am i making sense yeah exactly because i mean when we look at the dow um for example it's only 30 so here's the s&p 500 you can see it's rather smooth but if you go to the dow 30 it gets very choppy kind of you know sideways so you get a lot of movement and um there you are. I haven't forgotten ASX, we're still going there. <laughs> so semi is looking fairly good here. You can see that relative strength has been trending up overall, um, all year long. Uh, stochastics back above 80 on this one. We do have the PMO turning upward, filled black candle, but not really. It's still kind of, I wouldn't be worrying about that candlestick. Um, as far as the group goes, it is trending higher relative strength wise against the group. So this is a decent choice within RSI positive. Um, everything looks pretty good here on the daily chart. So let's go ahead and look at the weekly. And yeah, I mean, overhead resistance is here. So we're still below the longer term overhead resistance. So I would like to see that pop um, above uh, the that left top there. But Overall, I mean, um, PMO rising here, uh, scooter is over 90%. So this one does look pretty good um, in the longer term and the shorter term. Um, let's look at a five minute in case this is something interesting for you to want to get into. The last buy point was right here with a PMO crossed above its signal line and we had the positive RSI. So that would have gotten you in right around 750. Currently it is trading at the same price at 750. So you could still get in on that prior buy point, but you also have the hindsight being 2020. You can see that the PMO is still headed lower. So you might actually get a better buy point than right this moment. Um, you might be able to see this uh, turning up and then giving you that opportunity for the entry. Right now, we have a negative RSI and a fallen PMO, which tells me it's not an entry point, but we certainly could see an entry uh, later today. S-T-R-O. All right, store. That's a long. Oh, S-T-O-R? Yeah, O-S-T-R-O says here. There we go. I was doing O-R. <laughs> okay. Well, huh. Um, certainly looking weak um, and weaker today as it breaks down and below this uh, support level back here. PMO was turning up, but you can see it's starting to angle lower. Uh, stochastics in the basement, relative strength on this one against 
the group is doing okay. I mean, it's not doing great, but it's it's performing in line with the market mostly. Um, but we're we're looking at a stock that's underperforming a group that's just barely doing well. So everything on this chart, this this looks more like a short than it looks like a buy, in my opinion, just based on the the way these indicators are configured particularly if this PMO is going to continue to move lower. Notice that on Friday, we did have a bearish filled black candlestick. That means that price um, closed beneath the open, but higher than the day before. So you've got bulls pushing price up and then bears able to pull it back down below the open. So that is a negative uh, bearish candlestick. And we did get the fulfillment of that today so far. Look at the uh, um, the relative strength on this chart. Mm -hmm. On the is that for the industry group? Uh, the first yep. the first one's the industry group, which is performing just in line. Right. See and how it, this one's been underperforming, regardless. And I wanted to point out though, it's slightly rising. Well, you look at price. Price is not rising at all, and uh, just that's what relative strength is relative to the other one. So. If they're both falling and one is falling slow, more slowly, it's, it's going to show a rising uh, relative strength. <laughs> exactly. It's an excellent point, which is why when we've been in this bear market, it's been rather difficult because you really can't get away with relative strength being in line with the benchmark, which is the SPY. Because the SPY, if it's moving lower, like it does in a bear market, you need something that absolutely is outperforming the benchmark. Um, at this point, this one, as you said, it, it's not. It's performing in line with the benchmark here, and you can see, at least with the group, um, that's been the case. This stock is underperforming this group, so it's it's looking even uh, weaker. So next, not a fan. Next up is Uber. Small breakout from a short-term declining trend. RSI is positive. Don't like the PMO. It is in decline. Uh, Stochastics early warning system, as I like to call them, have turned up, but they are still below net neutral 50, meaning they're negative. And relative strength, really not that impressive, to be perfectly honest. But I do like that breakout right now. Of course, this candlestick has a nice big wick on it, meaning bears are winning the day currently on this stock. Um, I mean, the indicators aren't what I would want to get in on a stock. Uh, they wouldn't even be what I'd like if I were holding it. But based on what's going on right now with price, I do see this still as a hold. This is the next support level. So you're looking at, a, I would say, uh, a risk factor of over 6% right here just getting in if you're you know setting your stop right below this level so um i'm i'm not a fan okay got two requests for apple oh well, we have to do that all right this is what we're talking about who is leading the group technology is leading and of course uh, this one is you know basically the technology group to to some degree so we are seeing a breakaway gap back here we have the continuation or a runaway gap going on right now. It is trading slightly above, yep, slight, nope, just slightly below the last, um, the highest close in this cluster that we see over here. PMO turning up, our, our stochastics back and positive. You can see really nice outperformance. Um, Apple's looking pretty good here. The biggest issue for it is very strong overhead resistance. With a breakaway gap and a, a continuation gap, I don't think it's going to have much trouble getting above that level and seeing the technology group and, and those industry groups within, including computer hardware, doing mostly, uh, most of them doing well. I think you're going to get a breakout here. I think um, Apple's looking pretty good. Five minute chart. Um, the sell point came in today right about here. And we're not at a buy point, so looks like you, well, you've got the gap. So this could be, this would be the next support level. That would be the buy point I'd be looking at uh, if we continue down on the day. Okay, PFIX. Oh, yes. Full disclosure, I do own this one. All right, we're seeing a bit of a consolidation phase going on here. This looked kind of flaggish. 
or a pennant. You can see declining tops, rising bottoms. Um, so sort of pennant-like, I guess. Um, PMO is still rising. RSI is positive. Stochastics, um, while they have dropped below 80, they're still in positive territory. Um, relative performance isn't great right now, but I still am looking for interest rates to move higher. We have this double bottom formation going on here. Um, a move to at least the confirmation line would be something I'd be looking for, particularly given uh, these indicators still look positive. So I'm still going to hold it. Uh, I think you could make a case for an entry right now, but you do have hindsight being 2020. Um, if, if it gets down closer to this level, it might be a much better entry uh, on that 20 and 50. But honestly, it, it's not looking too bad right now. D-U-O-L. Okay. No buy point on that five-minute chart, by the way. That's a new one. Duolingo. My husband is addicted to this software. I didn't realize that they had a stock. Very interesting. Um, big breakaway gap here, a continuation of that rally breakout here. I am guessing, and I'm going to just check it really fast over here if I can get everything. I am guessing that earnings are part of that that big breakout, but let's double check that. Hang on. I think it will be good information to have. Yep. February, February 28th was earnings. So this is a nice big breakout on earnings. I know Mary Ellen, um, my colleague, she very much likes to see these earnings breakouts. You usually are going to see a continuation to the upside. The big problem for DOL right now is it is overbought. Um, overbought territory hasn't been a good friend. To, Do, to Duolingo, you can see that when it gets in that overbought section, it does tend to turn down. So I think entry right now is a bit on the risky side. I would like to see something like we saw on Friday, a little bit of consolidation. Um, but I, I suspect this one's going to keep moving higher. Um, certainly investors liked what they saw as far as earnings. Okay, shop. Yeah, it's making the turn. It's in technology, software starting to look decent. Um, you can see right here the relative strength starting to improve just a little bit here. Um, you know, it's performing in line with, with its group. So I'll, that's acceptable since the group is starting to outperform. Stochastics is starting to rise. They're above 20. Um, PMO hasn't quite turned up, but looks like it will. I like the look here of Shopify and your upside potential on it is really good here at 20, 25% to get back to this overhead resistance. If it gets just to that gap, that would be an eight and a half percent gain. So I think there's um, so certainly some small gain possible here on Shopify. Um, I do like the look of this chart. Buy point, it looks like today, Dad, I, everything opened upward, but everything's st starting to peter out here. Uh, most of these charts are not at buy points. We're seeing these five-minute PMOs just falling. Yeah, it looks like the big techs were leading the market, and uh, they must be backing off at this point. Mm -hmm. Here's the SPY, the five-minute chart, and you can see we do have that. We were talking rounded tops. So that looks fairly rounded uh, to me. And the gap is right down there. So I would say we are vulnerable at least for a quarter of a percent pullback here from the level we're at. CHPT. Well, we've been talking rounded tops. That's kind of looking like one right there. Uh, PMO in decline, RSI negative, stochastics flat and in negative territory and really don't like that relative performance of specialty retailers. That's not a good sign. We often say that half of a stock's price movement is affected by the sector and industry group uh, and what they're doing. So that's not a good sign for this one. Um, I know that these guys are involved in the, um, not fueling stations, but charging stations. That's one of their uh, primary um, products, but it's certainly not looking that, uh, that good right now. J-E-P-I. Okay, this is an ETF. Third day of upside movement. PMO turning up. This, this looks like it's 
fairly reminiscent of the SPY. Stochastics now back in positive territory. This one looks pretty good. Upside potential looks rather limited before it hits this areas of overhead resistance. That's only a one, one and uh, maybe a half percent gain. And if it gets back up here, that's like 2.45%. Um, I, I guess I'm looking at this as ETF premium income. It's an income fund. So it probably is a slow mover, um, but it does pay a regular dividend. So that's nice. Look at the yield on this one. Makes Probably makes it a little more worthwhile, even though you're going to get that price movement doesn't do as much. But I think it looks pretty good here. Well, look at the, uh, uh, the uh, events numbers of the uh, quarterly dividend has been dropping mm -hmm. so um maybe 11 almost 12 percent for a year but uh and of course yeah. and i would say check your brokerage numbers go to the your broker to check on on uh, yields and uh dividends absolutely this is kind of ballparkish usually <laughs> Okay, Google, they want you to compare Google with Apple. Ah, which one? This or that is what I like to call that. Okay. okay, so when I do a this or that, I'm usually paying attention to what's going on under the surface here as far as relative strength. So we have a group that's improving. We have a stock that is performing basically in line with its group. Consequently, it's outperforming the SPY. So Google's looking pretty good. It's above its 50 upside potential around 14%. So I do like that, especially on a, a, a big name like Google. To be precise, uh, they, the, they use G-O-O-G for Google. I don't know if there's a difference. I don't follow that closely. Looks about the same. Looks the same, yeah. Okay. And Apple. Now these are in two different groups, so it makes it's kind. We're <laughs> we're kind of looking at apples and oranges, no pun intended, um, because they are in different industry groups. Um, breakaway gap, continuation gap. It's already been above the fifty for a while. Excellent increase in participation or participation increase in relative strength against the S and P. Uh, PMO turning up, you know, honestly, I mean, both of these charts look pretty strong. Um, if we compare what's going on against the S&P, it's been flat and now starting to get better. In this case, yeah, flat, not as the improvement relative strength isn't quite as exciting as it is on Apple. You know, I, I really, it's hard to say this or that. They both look pretty good and they are kind of apples and oranges based on, on where they're trading, but I like them both. Maybe I'd say Apple over Google, but I can make a case for either of those stocks. P-O-O-L. Well, I can say no. Um, we do have stochastics starting to rise, which could be, like I said, they tend to be kind of an... Uh, they don't lag. They tend to be, I um, can't think of the word, but uh, early warning, basically, uh, early detection. You can see that they are rising, but everything else on this chart is just not speaking to me. I mean, it's still below this 20-day EMA. The declining tops trend line is still pretty much intact. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan here, and I don't know if you were looking for a buy or a hold here. Stop level, uh, about four and three quarters percent would get you below these, um, the support level right here and the, these levels here. So I think you, if you want to keep uh, holding it, you're, you're looking at that 4% uh, risk involved to keep it going. But uh, I don't think I'd be wanting to enter here. Walmart. Um, range bound, um, flat PMO. We looked at a stock like this earlier uh, in the program, RSI negative. Um, nothing here that I like. It's in consumer staples, which is, you know, if you're seeing tech and comm services start to take off uh, those growth areas, the defensive areas like staples are just going to languish. That's typically how it works. And Walmart is doing just that. 
I don't like it. Um, certainly is a hold because it is staying above the support level. And the stop level, probably one and three quarter, two percent, I'd say, um, would bring you below that trading range. Um, I, I'm not a fan here. I wouldn't be entering and I'd, I'd be setting a stop. Okay, we've got about two yeah. and a half minutes left. Okay. CX. Uh, you know, I've been hesitant with energy stocks because crude oil has been in a giant trading range. Um, this has been a nice little rally and it got things above the 20. It broke out Friday. It's pulling back now. So that's a good sign. I just don't like the fact the PMO is already trying to turn down. Uh, it is an almost two and a half percent decline. So it's not a big surprise here. Uh, stochastic struggling relative strength starting to, um, come back down. Um, Declining top line. I think it looks okay for a hold at this point. There's nothing to tell me to get rid of it. Um, I would consider a stop of about 3.9%, 4% on it to bring you below the 50 day and uh, right about here. Uh, I think it's a hold because we still could see that uh, PMO starting to turn back up. So uh, I don't think it looks like it's in trouble. It's just having a bad day. D L R is it bullish? D D D L R D L D R D L R. <laughs> yeah, builders first source. Got it. No, no, um, no. D L R. <laughs> the dog. Yes. The there we go. Got it. Uh, All right. Um. Hmm. Dark cross. Um, PMO in decline, RSI negative. Yes, stochastics are rising, but relative strength is, is not looking that good here. Uh, I'm not a fan of this particular one. Um, real estate is doing okay as a sector, but not great. Um, I don't like this one. I think it's pretty easy for me to say just based on those indicators. And I guess that's about it. I think we should close it down. I think uh, our producer ready. is going to wonder, uh, make sure he could get, gets room for everything. All right. So thank you all for attending the Decision Point Trading Room here live. For those of you who are watching the recording, we do record at noon Eastern time. So you can go to our homepage and register there to attend live. And I think that's all we've got, Dad. So with that, I'm going to wish everybody good luck and good trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.